Good morning. Can everyone please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I'd now like to introduce Jordan Dyer from George Washington High School, who will lead us in the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Thank you, Jordan, and you may be seated. Well, good morning again and welcome. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the State Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Michael Martirano. Good morning, everybody. It is great to be here and we're delighted to have our governor here today. Just give him a round of applause one more time. He is the busiest man in our state. Uh, I'll put this down here. I love the opportunity to bring educators together to celebrate. Today, we are going to celebrate the achievements at this special event honoring West Virginia high schools who have achieved a graduation rate of 90% or higher during the 2014-2015 school year. What a wonderful occasion it is to acknowledge and celebrate the hard work of our students, teachers, administrators, and school personnel who offer support every day to our young people. I join you today filled with energy, enthusiasm, optimism, and hope for our more than 277,000 students and the future education in West Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. 47 of our high schools throughout the state achieved a graduation rate last year greater than 90%. 47 high schools have already achieved that. That deserves a round of applause. I offer my sincere congratulations and formally thank each of you for representing public schools in such an admirable way. Throughout the last year, I have laid out a very solid strategic plan with our governor, with our Board of Education that puts students at the center of what we do. One core piece of that plan is to ensure that more students graduate from high school college and career ready, but more important, future ready. I have set an aggressive goal of 90% graduation rate statewide by 2020. And remember, what gets measured gets done. Where we choose to put our focus gets done, and we are getting results now. I have asked our community to rally around this concept, and as ev evidence today, our schools are responding. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no more important metric to define the quality of public education than the graduation rate. We can talk about a variety of other measurements that are extremely important, but at the end of the day, if a child doesn't graduate, we have concerns. For me, one dropout is too many. 
which is why I've also launched an unapologetic tag on our dropout rate. We've got to reduce our dropout rate and increase our graduation rate. If we are talking about the economic development of our state, we have to ensure that every child graduates so that they can have a productive life, ready for a career and ready for college because the research is replete in knowing what occurs to a young person if they drop out. We must embrace this singular focus and we must expect every child, not just some, regardless of their zip code, but every child should be entitled the opportunity to graduate. And we as leaders need to put in place programs that support a differentiated pathway to allow for that success to occur. All of you are doing this. The graduation rate in West Virginia has steadily increased throughout the last five years. Increased nearly 10% from 76.4 in 2009 to 2010 to where we are today. West Virginia currently ranks in the top half of all states in America for a graduation rate which sits right now at 86.5. Is that good enough? No, but that's something to celebrate. 86.5 is well above the national average and the national average for graduation rate is 81, 82 percent. That deserves a round of applause within itself. I'm also happy to report that according to the new reauthorization of ESEA, better known as Every Student Succeed Acts, that schools that are defined as high school graduation rates below 67 percent are defined as schools that need additional solid intervention, as low performing schools. Governor, I am proud to tell you that West Virginia has no high school in that category and we are very proud of that. Today we celebrate 47 high schools throughout our state with their graduation rates at 90%. This, these high schools represent 40.5 of the 116 high schools in West Virginia. And I hope one day to have all 116 schools in front of us to celebrate the graduation rate. Eight of those 47 schools actually had a graduation rate of over 95%. That is phenomenal, and as a former high school principal, I know how difficult that is. Those three, one of the high schools, had 97%. The top three schools who deserve additional attention, the top school for the graduation rate in our state with 97% is Frankfurt High School in Mineral County. Would the principal please stand for that for the school? The superintendent is here as well. The next highest rate is Moorfield High School in Hardy County. Is the principal from Moorfield High School here? Stand up, congratulations, sir. So proud of your efforts. Third is Pat, oh my gosh, Patton, Payton? I knew I was gonna mess that up. Payton City High School in Wetzel County. Where is the principal there? Congratulations. But an interesting piece of feedback. We all know that if we offer extracurricular activities, and sports and athletics, it serves as a hook to keep young people in school. An interesting statistic is that every one of our high schools who had state championship football teams also had graduation rates of 90% or higher as well. Now I want to share with you one personal anecdote. Magnolia High School, where are you? Right there. They were so confident when I visited earlier in the year that they were going to have a high graduation rate, they presented me with a signed football prior to them winning the state championship. Now that's confidence. The only thing that I expect now is a signed football from Bridgeport as well as Wheeling Park. So keep that in mind. Ladies and gentlemen, our high schools and our schools in general are truly the heartbeat of our communities. This success of the graduation rate memorializes the importance of extracurricular activities, connections, programs, differentiated ways of looking, care and support about young people. They are places of hope. In conclusion, I know that we can continue this success by working together. As I've said, I hope one day to be celebrating 
all 116 high schools in West Virginia. I look forward to celebrating the efforts from our teachers, our staff, our principals, and our community, because truly, this is the metric that matters to our state. It defines the future of our young people. And the more our young people graduate from high school, college and career ready, the better our state will be economically and in terms of prosperity. It is a wonderful opportunity to be with you today. Ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me great privilege and honor to introduce someone who has become extremely special to me. I have the opportunity to introduce our great governor, Governor Earl Ray Tomlin. I have all kinds of talking points on his biography. I could be here for two days reading all of his accolades, and that probably wouldn't be enough time. But I want to talk for the moment from the heart. As many of you know, I've adopted West Virginia as my home state, but I hail from another state and as I entered into the superintendency position, I was welcomed so personally by many of you, by all of you, by all West Virginians who reached out a hand to me to support me in the endeavor to help children. Early on, as I was being introduced to the state, I was introduced to our governor. I walked up to the mansion and I did not necessarily expect to knock on the door and have the governor personally answer the door. That, for me, said spoke volumes. I have told that story, sir, so many times because it defines for me the humbleness of a servant leader, of an individual who understands the people of West Virginia. When we talk about the people of West Virginia, we talk about kindness, caring, compassion, and hardworking individuals. That has become evidence in my visits to all 55 counties, and our governor emulates that. I had the opportunity and honor to meet with him weekly, and he's a tough guy. I've had to up my game. Every time he asks me questions about education, I have to know down to the level of data and detail. And you just can't give him a yes, no answer. You just can't give him an answer and look away because he'll get eye contact with you and he'll pull you aside later and want more information. He cares about our children. He's advanced initiatives in, House, in Senate Bill 359 that ensure that young people will graduate, ensure that children stay in school every day. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure and honor to introduce someone who I not only consider our governor, but a personal friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Earl Ray Thomas. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Mr. Superintendent, for that very kind introduction and for the work that you and your team at the Department of Education do to give our students access to quality education. It's also great to be here with our president of our State Board of Education, Mike Gray, and I want to thank you, Mike, for all the hours and the hard work you put in to uh, lead our State Board of Education. I certainly do appreciate it. I made a little request of the superintendent, which I do on a regular basis. I said, Mike, the next time that we get, we're together in a group like this, I want you to sing the national anthem. <laughs> just the way Jordan did it today. And I'm uh, you know, just amazed as I travel around this state and see the talent that our young people have. And Jordan, that's a great job today. I think we should give him another round of applause for being a great job. It is really great to be here this morning with administrators and, a te and teachers from schools all across our state. I want to thank each of you for your dedication to our state students. Five years ago, when I became governor, we started down a path to strengthen West Virginia's public education system, increase the number of programs available to our students, and expand learning opportunities to teach our kids the skills they need to succeed. That may come in the form of technical training, an apprenticeship, a two-year degree from one of our community and technical colleges, or a four-year degree at an in-state college or university. And since then, 
we've made major strides, made major progress. From our nationally recognized pre-K programs to my state, my life, simulated workplace environments, and a number of hands-on opportunities in between. And our kids now have access to more quality educational programs than we have ever had before. As we continue to improve opportunities for our students, we need to make sure they understand the importance of graduating on time, prepared with the skills they need to take advantage of new opportunities that await them here in the Mountain State. And that starts with ensuring that they are in the classroom for 180 days of instructional time. Our state's future is changing. Our kids need the skills to fill the jobs that are being created for them. By encouraging our students to stay on track, attend class, and make graduating a top priority, we can help them succeed long after they have graduated. It doesn't matter which path they choose after high school, as long as they choose one. Today, I'm proud to join superintendents, administrators, principals, and teachers from 47 high schools across West Virginia that understand this message and have worked tirelessly to promote the importance of graduating on time in their, in their schools and in their local communities. Today, we're here to recognize your efforts and celebrate your students' accomplishments. Achieving a 90% graduation rate is outstanding. Because of your hard work, our kids continue to excel and achieve. So I want to thank you for giving our students the support and encouragement they need to succeed. The work that you do each and every day does make a major difference. So I want you to keep up the good work and congratulations on this great accomplishment. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you, Governor Tomlin. Um, it is now my pleasure to recognize the schools that are in attendance today. Um, Mr. Roach is going to be taking photos. We're going to um, call the superintendent and principal up by name, but we also ask any local elected board members um, or elected officials that are with us in attendance from that county to join, to join us at the front for a photo as we call um, each school. And I'll be calling counties in alphabetical order. So. Without further ado, we will get started on recognizing our schools. Yeah, so you guys will be up here for the picture. So our first school from Barber County is Philip Barber High School. Um, Superintendent Jeff Woofter and Autumn Queen representing Principal Mark Lamb. Our next school from Boone County, Sherman High School, Superintendent John Hudson and Principal Todd Barnett. From Brooke County, Brooke High School, Superintendent Tony Shute and Principal T Tim Panett. Thank you. 
From Doddridge County, Doddridge High School, Superintendent Rick Kaufman and Principal Gregory Coons. From Grant, from Grant County, Petersburg High School, Superintendent D.D. Lundin Bolton and Assistant Pr Principal Paula Weiss. <laughs> Probably have the wrong names here, but thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> From Hancock County, Weir High School, Superintendent Kathy Kidder Wilkerson and Principal Dan Enick. Not sure. Oh, here you are. Hancock. We're recognizing two schools from Hardy County. So Superintendent Barbara Whitecott, and I'll ask you to stay up for two pictures. Um, first, we have Moorfield High School Principal Dwight Williams. And also from Hardy County, East Hardy High School, Principal Jennifer Strauderman. From Harrison County, Bridgeport High School, Superintendent Mark Manchin and Principal Mark DeFazio. We're recognizing two schools from Jackson County, so Superintendent Blaine Hess, I'll ask you to stay for both pictures. Our first school is Ravenswood High School, Principal Joe Hendricks. Our next high school from Jackson County is Ripley High School, Assistant Principal Beverly Chateau.
from Kanawha County, my alma mater, George Washington High School, Principal George Allenbacher. From Marion County, North Marion High School, Superintendent David Price and Principal Rusty DeVito. I'm sorry, Gary Price. Superintendent Gary Price. From Marshall County, Cameron High School, Superintendent Michael Hintz, Principal Jack Kane, and Assistant Principal Kelly Pettit. We're recognizing two schools from Mason County, so Superintendent Jack Cullen, I'll ask you to stay for both pictures. Our first school is Wahama High School, Principal Kenny Bond, and Assistant Principal Missy Van Meter. Also from Mason County, Hannon High School, Principal Karen Oldham. From Mineral County, we also have two schools. Superintendent Sean Dilley. Our first school is Kaiser High School, Principal Mike Lewis. Also from Mineral County, Frankfurt High School, which as Dr. Bartorano mentioned earlier, is our top performing high school in the state at 97.89% graduation rate. <laughs> principal Joe Riley and Assistant Principal Kelly Haynes. From Mingo County, we'll be recognizing two schools, Superintendent Robert Bavera. Our first school is Tug Valley High School, Principal Johnny Branch.
Also from Mingo County, Mingo Central High School, Principal Teresa Jones. From Monongalia County, Clay Battelle High School, Principal David Cottrell. From Morgan County, we'll be recognizing two schools. We have with us today Superintendent David Banks and Assistant Superintendent Kristen Tuttle. Our first high school is Pawpaw High School, Principal Melinda Casey Camp. Also from Morgan County, Berkeley Springs High School, Principal Mitchell Nida. From Nicholas County, Richwood High School, Superintendent Keith Butcher and Principal Scott Williams. We did not see them this morning. I'm not sure that they're here today, but congratulations. Oh, they had, a, okay, they had, they had weather related issues. From Ohio County, Wheeling Park High School, Superintendent Diana Bargo and Principal Amy Minch. From Pendleton County, Pendleton County High School, Superintendent Doug Lambert and Principal Lori Moore. Representatives from Pendleton County, okay, they may be experiencing weather issues as well. Oh, they here they are, thank you. No, that's okay. <laughs> You're in the back there. From Pleasance County, St. Mary's High School, Superintendent Mike Wells and Principal Jeff Soul. We're recognizing three high schools from Putnam County. Uh, I, I invite Gary Cook, who is the Director of Secondary Education, to come forward. And our first high school is Winfield High School, Principal Bruce McGrew.
Also from Putnam County, Hurricane High School Principal Richard Campbell. And lastly, from Putnam County Buffalo High School, Principal Tawny Stillianudakis, Assistant Principal Michelle Johnson. From Randolph County, Harmon High School, Superintendent Pamela Hewitt and Principal April Sinek. From Ritchie County, Ritchie County High School, Superintendent Ed Toman and Assistant Principal Caleb Lawrence. From Tyler County, Tyler Consolidated High School, Superintendent Robin Daffalani and Principal Kent Yoho. From Webster County, Webster County High, Superintendent Scott Cochran and Principal Stacy Cutler. We'll be recognizing four schools from Wetzel County, Superintendent Letha Williams, and our first school is Hundred High School, uh, Principal Daniel Gottrin. Also from Wetzel County, Payton City High School, Principal Jason Salva. Also from Wetzel County, Valley High School, Principal J.C. Kimball. <laughs> and finally from Wetzel County, Magnolia High School, Principal Kathy Schmaltz.
from Work County, Work County High School, Superintendent Mary Jane Pope Alban and Principal Elizabeth Smith. We'll be recognizing two schools from Wood County, Superintendent John Flint. Our first high school is Williamstown High School's Principal Pat Peters. Okay. <laughs> Also from Wood County, Parkersburg South High School, Principal Tim McCartney. And last but certainly certainly not least from Wyoming County, Westside High School, Assistant Superintendent Robin Hall and Principal Keith Stewart. Oh, and I see Bucky Blackwell is here with us today as well. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, sorry Bucky. You need no introduction. And just briefly, we do have, there were five high schools who were unable to attend today, but I did want to just um, recognize them and give them a quick round of applause. Um, Musselman High School from Berkeley County, Spring Mills High School from Berkeley County, Union Education Complex from Grant County, Washington High School. Oh, they're here? Oh, please, come up. I'm sorry, I, I had you down as not attending. Which school is it? Oh, I'm sorry, Union Education Complex from Grant County? Okay, I think we may have missed you earlier. Sorry about that. And the last two schools, make sure, to make sure they are not here, uh, Washington High School in Jefferson County and Grafton High School in Taylor County. Yeah, so only four counties didn't make it, but one more round of applause for all of our schools that were recognized today.